Hi, Jerry and Jimmy Ann. My name is Megan Williams and I'm from Died For You Ministries. I just wanted to take some time today to kind of tell you a little bit of the history of the birthing silk. <laughs> As you know by now, um, Roxanne has been cooking up a little surprise for you based off of the word that you had from the Lord about birthing. And the Father put it on her heart to order a pair of 45 inch round quills for you. And when she told me about it, immediately I just, I felt a stirring in my spirit about it. And so I was really excited. The analogy that the Father has given me is that each silk is sort of like a puzzle. And it's my job to put all the different pieces together. And so sometimes the customer brings a piece. So like in this case, the piece that Roxanne brought was that there was this word about birthing. And so that's her piece. So she brought her piece and said, okay, this is the piece that the Father's given me. And so my job was to figure out who has the rest of the pieces. Do I have the rest of the pieces or does someone on my team have the pieces? And so as I prayed about it, I felt like he highlighted one of my intercessors. And so I contacted her and I said, hey, we, uh, we have an order here for a birthing silk. Will you just press in and see what the Father has for you? And when she got back with me, she said, you know, this one was harder than what I've experienced before. I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting. We're doing a birth thing and it's difficult. And I was like, hmm, what do we have going on here? So when she got back in touch with me and shared with me what her, what she had received from the Lord, he'd actually kind of showed her a vision. What I first created was sort of my version of her description of the vision that he gave her. So I created this, and when I saw the finished silk, I looked at it and I thought, that is not at all what I was feeling. <laughs> and like, he hadn't showed me anything exactly, but I was, I was feeling like deep groans of intercession, you know? But whenever I hit a point where I'm not sure where he's going, <laughs> um, I just kind of wait. <laughs> and in that time, um, Roxanne had emailed me and said, hey, do you have a picture of it? Which I, I did have a picture of this, but I wasn't sure if this was what he was wanting to create or not. <laughs> so it was like, because to me, when I looked at these colors, I thought, they look like baby colors. I sent her a picture. Now bear in mind that Roxanne and I had had a few interactions at this point, but for the most part, we really didn't know each other all that well. And so I sent her this picture and I said, you know, I'm not entirely sure. And she was kind of like, um, no. <laughs> and so, uh, I don't want to speak for her, but my sense of how she felt about it was like, oh my gosh, what is this woman thinking? That's not at all what I'm feeling, <laughs> you know? And so, um, this was a very serious time in the process because the parallel throughout the whole process everything kept paralleling a birthing process and so this was the point where um, Roxanne was making the decision whether or not she was going to abort the baby and so what I felt like at this point was you know I kind of know the process that the father will take me through with silks and even though this one was um, proving to be a little bit more difficult than most silks usually are, that didn't necessarily mean it was wrong. I know that he always has a purpose and I don't always see what the purpose is. <laughs> so I just walk the path and go, I don't get it right now, but I know I'm gonna get it at the end. <laughs> It'll make sense. And so anyway, so I, um, you know, I felt like I was in the delivery room, <laughs> you know, and I'm just, you know, totally exposed and everything is a mess and I'm just, and then this person who I don't know that well is coming in in the middle of it going, oh my gosh, what? You know, and so there was like just this extreme awkwardness. <laughs> so as I'm waiting to hear, you know, like, is she going to abort this? And, you know, she said, if you don't feel like you're getting it, I was like, it's not that. It's that I do feel like we're supposed to create this. I just, it's not settled in my spirit now. What What is whether it's done, what's happening, you know, because I overdie things sometimes. And so it was just this big question of where are we? And I said, you know, if you will just trust me to, you know, follow it through with where the father leads, you know, I think that it'll be good in the end. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was a stretch for her because she was like, you know, can I, can I trust this woman, you know, and, um, or at least this is how I felt again, she can tell you herself. But anyway, 
she did finally bless me and say, you know, go ahead and finish it. We'll, we'll see what the father has. And I was like, okay. And so I continued to pray about it and, um, and talk with, you know, actually at this point I brought in two of my other intercessors just to be praying because, you know, one of the areas that the fathers had to break me is in, um, struggling to be perfect, you know, and, and with performance, um, just really wanting things to go right the first time. For me, I was like, okay, I need prayer with this because now that it's awkward and I've got this customer who's in on the awkwardness and, you know, she doesn't know me that well. And I'm just like, I just need prayer covering this. And so as we prayed it through, um, I really felt like the father was releasing me just to actually create a different silk. I went back, wiped the drawing board clean and, um, <laughs> and decided that I was going to create it in the colors that I was feeling. So the deep groans of intercession, which to me were coming out in like a dark gray and a cranberry and an indigo, just deep colors. And so as I talked with the initial intercessor who was helping me birth it, apparently the father had actually prepared her ahead of time that the final silk was not going to look like what he had showed her. And so I just love the way the father brings all that together. I created this one and it was sort of funny because when the time came to do it, I was struggling with a little bit of performance anxiety because I really wanted it to be right. And so I was trying to get past my flesh because I don't ever want to birth something out of a place of anxiety. <laughs> and so I happened to be doing um, a FaceTime call with uh, my lead intercessor. And I said to her, I was like, can you just pray for me while I do this. I just really need to pray this through. And then she said, you know what? I just really feel like I'm supposed to play my flute over you, which she does sometimes. And I've, it's, it always just ministers to me at a deep level. So she was playing her flute and I just felt this just peace in the presence of the Lord. I was like, okay. And so as I stood there looking at the silk spread out blank, and I was like, okay, what, what first? And what the father showed me to do was so funny to me because people always think that to create the silks that it's like um, they want to make a big deal of the natural about it so they, they like to think that like i travail over them for like five hours each and i kind of joke and tease people i'm like oh what do you think i sit there and like <gasps> you know <laughs> deep groans of intercession. And so as I'm standing here looking at the silk, the birthing silk spread out, getting ready to create it, what he showed me to do was to do the, <laughs> I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I am not doing that. You know, here I am on a video call. She's over my shoulder. I was like, <laughs> and so I sat there struggling with it for a minute, but you know, it's a prophetic act and you have to be obedient no matter how stupid it seems in the natural. So there I am, I'm like, <laughs> I'm doing it, but I'm also like laughing at myself because it just, you know, it was funny. And, um, and then I just, you know, he had like this just splash of the cranberry and then the colors started going on. There was like a swirl of the indigo. And, um, and so I just, that was feeling like life, you know, in the midst of it. And so anyway, so I create the silk and it gets finished. I pull it out and I look at it and I'm like, <sighs> yes. I just knew I was like, yes, this is, this is it. And I loved it. I actually had a little bit of scarf envy. I was like, oh, I kind of want to keep this one. Okay, sorry, I won't. I'm not tempted. I'm not tempted. I can't keep all the scarves. Anyway, but it was beautiful. I loved it. But when it was done, um, I sent it off to um, Nicole from Prophetic Worship Banners, who constructs the quills for us. And that night that I sent it off, I went to Carol's house, and she's the one who creates all the oils that I anoint all the silks with. And so I went there and I happened to tell her about this birthing silk that I had just created. And she looked at me and she said, are you serious? She's like, the father has been telling me to create a birthing oil. And so I was like, no way. I was like, that's, that's, that's crazy. And so I was there with another intercessor friend of mine. And so we got to midwife the process of the birthing, the birthing oil, the same way that my intercessor had midwifed the process of the birthing soap being created. And so um, she created this awesome birthing oil, which smells amazing. And so, mm, yummy. <laughs> and so we created that. And so um, there's a couple of bottles, uh, you know, that I sent down one for Roxanne and one for you guys. That's my gift to you, um, along with her gift to you. 
And so your silk <laughs> birthed the birthing oil on top of it. And so what I love is I love the connection. I love the fact that a word that the Father gave you years ago is now gathering this momentum and it's generating life all over the place. And so it's generating life to um, the different people that are getting it. And the, the reason why you see duplicates here is because of the fact that the Father released me to have a set of semicircle, you know, the, the uh, 45 inch round quills as well. And so I went to make it and this was the first one that I made and it's beautiful, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't exactly what I was hoping for. I wanted one that looked a little bit more like yours and so I actually did a second one. <laughs> and I was like, okay, and there's actually two here. There's a, there's a 14 by 72 inch scarf that's here too. And so I did create one that was a little bit closer and that actually should be arriving in California today for Nicole to quill it for me. Um, but then I had, I had these silks and I had these silks, all of which were birthing silks. And so I had a total of, you know, four of these guys and two of these guys. And I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? And so the father starts birthing in me this idea to have a giveaway. And so what kind of birthed out of um, a dialogue that went on between Roxanne and I is, is that um, I'm going to do a giveaway for some intercessors for these. But these, which again, remember, when I saw the pastels, it made me think, baby, these are going to be for people who are standing in faith for miracle children. And there's actually um, what we call the man size scarf, which is just a 6 by 24. This is a prayer cloth size. And Jerry, this is going to go to you um, because I understand that you have a gifting to pray for those who are standing in faith for miracle children. And so um, I have anointed this with the birthing oil and I'm going to send this down to you along with these silks for you guys to pray over hopefully for our giveaway recipients but we've got three here that are going to go to um, women who are standing in faith for miracle children and then we've got these two that will go to intercessors and so thank you so much for um, I love the fact <laughs> that even without you knowing that your ministry is bringing life. So you didn't even know any of this was going on behind the scenes, but just because of your obedience to share a word that the Father had given you, there's like these ripples of life that are going out. And so Father, I just thank you right now for Jerry and Jimmy Ann. I just pray blessings upon them and upon their ministry. I just ask, Father, that you would just use them even more to bring heaven to earth, Father, as in heaven, so on earth father we just thank you for their heart to bring life father for for them to be a light to the nations father just bless them as they walk in faith and expectation to see you move in big ways thank you for the life that they are bringing just continue to increase the authority and the power that they move in father just bless them now in jesus mighty name amen god bless you guys